In this episode, Perseverance watches something in the sky, struggles to see a rock sample, and drives at full speed before losing contact with Earth for two weeks. This video is part of a series following along with the Mars rover Perseverance. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, make sure to watch those first. Links are in the description. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss future episodes. It's Sol 173, and Perseverance takes a time-lapse video to search for clouds in the atmosphere. However, the rover spots something else, and it's not our little helicopter. This glimmering light in the sky is actually Deimos, one of the two Martian moons. Meanwhile, Ingenuity does take to the sky for its 12th flight and snaps some color images of the area below, revealing some more interesting but also hazardous terrain for the rover above South Saeta. With the failed sample attempt still fresh in mind, the rover is ordered to try again. The target? This interesting rock outcrop, known as Citadel. One rock in particular, nicknamed Rochette, is chosen as the target. Perseverance drives to take a closer look. The rover will first abrade the rock to check its suitability. After using its arm to abrade the rock, Perseverance takes a step back to examine its work. The patch is about 2 inches or 5 centimeters in diameter. The rock appears to be suitable for drilling, so the team orders the rover to go ahead. The drilling goes smoothly, and the sample is immediately photographed inside the sample tube. However, after a planned shaking operation to remove any dust from the lip of the tube, the sample seems to have disappeared. The team is desperately trying to get another visual on the sample, but poor lighting conditions prohibit them from doing so. With the failed sample attempt still in mind, the team decides to wait for better lighting conditions and confirmation that the sample is intact before sealing it for deposit on the Martian surface. Finally, on Sol 193, the core sample is photographed once again. History has been made and one of the main objectives of the rover's mission has been completed. Also on Sol 193, or September 4th, the rover captures its most detailed view of ingenuity flying so far. A plume of dust can be seen on takeoff. As the helicopter's navigation filter prefers flat terrain, the team programs a waypoint into the flight above flat ground, allowing a little breather for the helicopter. We can see ingenuity pause and recalibrate before continuing. Meanwhile, the rover has now processed the sample collected and stored it in an airtight titanium capsule, ready to be stored on the Martian surface. To build on their success, the team orders the rover to collect another sample from the same rock, which also goes smoothly. Perseverance now has two successful samples ready to be dropped for later collection. Back on Earth, scientists are starting to piece together the history of the area. Data from the samples collected so far show that the region likely had a sustained presence of water. It's even theorized that the samples themselves could be home to tiny bubbles of ancient Martian water. To celebrate, the rover captures a selfie, looking down at the two drill holes on the target rock. It's now time for the rover to move on, with South Saeta being the next destination. On Sol 200, Perseverance drives at full speed using its AutoNav software. This video shows the full day's drive. This video is sped up by a factor of 200 with the rover moving much slower in real time. However, it demonstrates just how far the rover can traverse in a single Sol. After reaching the edge of South Saeta, the rover stops to take a quick look around. Visible towards the left is a portion of the Delta Front. The top of the Delta Front has several visible scarps, thought to have been carved by running water. The rover will eventually visit this exciting area up close. 
As the season begins to change, perseverance records a drop in atmospheric density. This could spell problems for ingenuity. Flying on Mars is a precise balancing act of rapidly spinning the rotors to provide lift, conserving power, and operating within tested constraints. As the density drops, the blades will have to spin faster to provide the same lift. In order to get into the air, the blades will spin faster than ever tested on Earth. This is because Ingenuity has already outlasted its planned mission duration, but the team is confident that the helicopter will be able to continue, even if that means using a little more energy. Perseverance finds an interesting rock outcrop in the South Saeta area, nicknamed Bastide. The thin layers of Bastide suggest this rock may be sedimentary and was deposited over time by water. Although the rock is interesting, Perseverance must quickly find a parking space for the next couple of weeks. Mars will soon be directly behind the Sun, and communication with the rover could be scrambled by the Sun's energized particles. This will last for approximately two weeks. During the solar conjunction, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter passes above to check on the rover, which can be seen as a tiny dot in this image. While NASA can't communicate with the rover, they have pre-programmed some activities to keep Perseverance occupied. The rover is ordered to take a panorama, something that the team can trust it to do alone with no danger to the mission. However, all driving and arm operations are suspended. Back on Earth, a breakthrough is made based on the images Perseverance has collected so far. Remember this image taken in the first episode? This image of the Delta nicknamed Kodiak led to a paper being published in Science Magazine, confirming that the rover is sitting on the floor of an ancient lake. Where the water previously flowed from the river system and hit the ancient lake, the speed of the water suddenly decreased, and any sediments carried were deposited to form these mighty deltas. This is now a scientific fact. With the solar conjunction coming to an end, the rover stays in its parking spot, performing weather and chemistry experiments, while the engineers check to ensure that all the driving systems are ready to go once again. Ingenuity conducts a spin test to see if the blades will cope with the higher speeds required to get into the air. The test is passed and the helicopter lifts off for its 14th flight. Back on Earth, a twin model of Perseverance, nicknamed Optimism, is ready to help out where necessary. This twin rover can be used to test out risky maneuvers, diagnose any issues Perseverance is having, and even help to save the rover if it becomes stuck in a sand dune. This would be done by the team simulating the environment and testing the best way to free the rover if it did get stuck. On Sol 257, or November 9th, Perseverance captures its first Martian sunset. Martian sunsets have been seen before by other rovers, but it's always a stunning sight. The team identifies an interesting rock nearby and sends the rover to investigate. The rock is abraded and found to be suitable for yet another core sample. The drilling is a success, and the sample is stored on board the rover. Perseverance now has three samples for a return to Earth. The journey so far has been incredible, but what will the rover discover in the next three months? Click here to find out. Thanks for watching Elder Fox. Remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest discoveries.